Chairpersons, friends and colleagues, I'm Professor Fazila Malik from Bangladesh and today I would like to tell you the story of a 57 year old gentleman who came to our hospital with non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. He had multiple risk factors for coronary artery disease and his entrance into our hospital was somewhat dramatic. He was taken to the emergency and soon after he developed VT followed by cardiac arrest. Fortunately, he was reverted promptly by DC shock and CPR. And once he was stabilized, the medical officers from the emergency took him to the cath lab for further evaluation. His ejection fraction was 40%. At the cath lab, he was more or less stable and we were able to do his angiogram without any incident. His right coronary artery was normal. However, it was giving collaterals to the left side. The left coronary artery, there was severe stenosis in the distal left main, including the trifurcation. The LED was totally occluded from its origin the ramus had a 99% stenosis and the LCX similarly had a 99% stenosis. At that point of time, it was not possible for us to arrange an emergency CABG for our patient. So the only option for revascularization for him would be PCI. Now doing a PCI with this case would not be easy at all. We understood that because of the complex anatomy and also because he had suffered a cardiac arrest only a few hours back. But we needed to safeguard him and so we decided that we would do a PCI. We also understood that we had to be very efficient and effective. So with that in mind, we first attempted to wired the LED with the help of a microcatheter. The wire went into the diagonal. So we kept the wire there and we did balloon predilatation with a 1.25 by 10 balloon. After this, we were able to negotiate the wire into the LED. Then proceeded to do balloon dilatation further with a 2 by 15 balloon. The vessel opened up nicely. We then went to the ramus, wired the ramus with the support of a microcatheter. We did balloon predilatation of the ramus with a 2 by 10 millimeter balloon. The vessel showed quite a long stenosis. Now the main uh, crux of the matter would be dealing with the LCX. We could not afford to lose the, lose the LCX. However, this vessel had severe osteal stenosis and to top it, there was severe angulation of the vessel and this would prove difficult to wire, we felt. So what we did is, with the intent to treat the LCX, we took another guide catheter, a six French guiding catheter via the radial route. And we then disengaged the femoral catheter slightly. We put the radial root catheter, engaged it to the left main, and we wired the ramus. We then gently pulled the wire from the ramus and with gentle negotiation, we were able to wire the LCX. So now we were in business. All three vessels were wired and we had two guide catheters parked near the oste of the left main, one from the femoral root and one from the radial root. So we could use either catheter whenever required. That is the ping pong technique. So first of all, what we did is we did pre-dilatation of the LCX with a 2 by 12 balloon. Following pre-dilatation, we took a 3 by 12 NC balloon and placed it from left main to LED. And we took a 2.5 by 24 drug eluding stent and placed it in the LCX covering the ostea properly. We then deployed our stent at nominal pressure. After that, we pulled back the stent balloon and we inflated to higher pressure. We removed the wire and balloon from the LCX after deploying our stent. We then proceeded to crush the LCX stent with the balloon that we had already parked in the LED. 
After crushing the stent in the LCX, we rewired the LCX. And we proceeded to do the first kiss between LAD and LCX. After this was done, we took a 2.5 by 18 drug eluding stent to the ramus. We took another stent, a 3 by 38 drug eluding stent from left main to LAD. Now we needed to position our stent in the ramus properly so that it did not go too much into the left main. And to properly position it, what we did is we partially inflated the balloon in the LCX and positioned our stent in the ramus. We then started inflating the stent in the ramus and we simultaneously deflated the balloon in the LCX. We deployed our stent in the ramus properly and after that we did kissing balloon inflation between left main to ramus and left main to LCX. After this, we removed the wire and balloon both from the ramus as well as from the LCX. We proceeded to position our stent from the ostea of the left main to the LAD. And in this, we used a cuspal wire also to identify the ostea. Here the cuspal wire was the wire that was previously in the LCX. We deployed our stent at nominal pressure and then subsequently pulled it back and inflated the balloon at higher pressure. So we have deployed all three stents now. We then proceeded to do proximal optimization with a 4 by 8 NC balloon. We rewired the ramus after this through the femoral root catheter. LCX was rewired through the radial root catheter and at that time the femoral catheter was disengaged. We opened up the strut of the ramus tent with a 2.5 by 8 NC balloon. After this we started placing three balloons sequentially. We placed a 3 by 12 millimeter NC balloon at the LED, 2.5 by 8 for the ramus and a 2.75 by 10 to the LCX. After positioning our balloons, we did tracing. We had, took a stent width and that also showed that our stents were properly uh, opened up. We subsequently did a repot with a 4.5 by 8 NC balloon. We took a IVAS and had a look and we found that there was a huge plaque burden in our vessels. However, the stents were well opposed and the trifurcation looked fine. And this is the final angiographic view. This case was done in January of 2020 and our patient is asymptomatic and doing well. So in case summary, in this case, we applied multiple bifurcation stenting technique. From left main to LAD and left main to LCX, it was DK crush. LCX to ramus was stab and LAD to ramus was mini crush. We used dual catheters both through the femoral and radial root, catheters were either engaged or disengaged as required, which is known as also the ping pong technique. And our take home message would be tackling trifurcation left main lesions using multiple bifurcation techniques may be an option in situations where CABG cannot be performed. The ping pong technique enabled intervention of complex trifurcation left main disease IVAS helped us and optimal left main PCI can significantly impact the patient's long-term outcome. And the most important ingredient here was the teamwork and from the entire team of National Heart Foundation Hospital and Research Institute, Dhaka, Bangladesh, I would like to say thank you for giving me this opportunity.